It says that we're live. Let's verify this. Maybe refresh the screen there, Bobby. Oh, yes, I see you. Yes, we are live. We did it. All right. right Hello, on. everybody. You can see that us online trainers are so good with technology. I have no idea how this works, but Bavio there has helped me and made sure that it's live. So first things first, guys, if you have any questions, 100% um, ask them in the comments. We would love to hear from you. Bavi is basically going to collect the comments. She's on another screen on another computer for us and um, ask them at the end. So uh, Alex and I are happy to talk about that. But for now, let me introduce the guy to my left, your right, maybe. No, my right, your left, Alex Herman. He is um, he's he's a full-time firefighter. The craziest thing is he actually does this online training thing as as almost like a side gate to complement what he's doing. He's he's also a relatively new father. We've got sons about the same age at three years. And um, and and the coolest thing about what is going on here is. Alex has had, uh, I'll give you the numbers in a second, but the tactics that he uses are actually not any different. And that's one thing that I really want to get out of this conversation is that it's often like you have all the tactics with the Online Trader Academy. What you do is you need to continually up-level your skill set and, and you need to up-level all of your habits. And, and that's what Alex did and that's why he's doing so well. So, I mean, Alex ran a version of the Founding Client Challenge and did $11,000 with nine clients. That's the same founding client challenge, a lot of what you guys have done. I mean, so in seven days, $11,000, but only with nine clients. And the reason for that is it was it was effectively the same type of challenge as you know we often teach. We teach people how to do 197. The difference was is increased skill set. And um, and that's that made a big difference. In May, he did 6,614 bucks. Uh, in June to date, he's done 55,120. So you can see that that the numbers are basically the same and you know June should be higher than May and it continues going up. So uh, as with anything, it's really important not to take numbers at face value just because somebody had success once doesn't mean that they have anything to teach you. I wanted to tell you guys kind of what Alex did with the founding client challenge and then in May and in June to show you that he's been able to continually do well. Uh, so many advertisements you see of people who have done well with online training. It's like, I did so great in three weeks. It's like, yeah, bro, tell me what you did in two months. Uh, Let's see. Let's see how well this continues on. So, without further ado, Alex, man, glad to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me here. It's exciting. Uh, talk to me about talk to me about what I guess your life was like before online training. How you were kind of mixing your time between firefighting and literally fighting fires and uh, and fitness. Cool. Um, so, got into personal training like most people do at first. Uh, Two thousand eight. Now, so. 12 years ago, um, I was doing it kind of always as a side thing for me, but it was that, that same trap of, of time for money and running out of time and the times that I wanted to be with friends and family and doing things were the times when clients also wanted to train. Um, right. And then uh, 2017, my son was born and uh, I was spending evenings and mornings at the gym and it just wasn't... Uh, it's just not what I wanted anymore because priorities shifted and I needed to needed to find a change there that, that wasn't going to keep working for me. Uh, Isn't that amazing how that happens? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man, it, becoming uh, a father changes you, huh? And I, and I loved it at the gym. I did. I loved being with the clients and, and being in that environment. But uh, it was like you'd be there till 9 p.m. and you're like, oh. I didn't even see my son tonight. Like he, he's he's yeah. at home with my wife right now, and I'm I'm here coaching it's, these. It's these great. People. Twenty year old single dude. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, fine. exactly. Uh, I say once I, once I grew up, I knew that it wasn't sustainable. I needed something else. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, cool. So 2018, um, one of my uh, the the guy who actually owned the gym that I was working at at the time, he uh, he recommended. OTA one to me and uh, and kind of introduced me to online training and um, 2018 I took that course my son was a year old at the time so I was like fitting the course in between naps and when he goes to bed at night and right. uh, I just kind of started taking action on the course at that point and that's 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 how it all started that was late 2018 so what I'm hearing is that you know things weren't things weren't so bad for you you know, no, like, no, like no. you were enjoying what you were doing in the gym. You just basically your life changed a little bit. Like the catalytic point was, you know, you had a son and you just knew that you didn't want to be in the gym. 
Yeah, yeah, for right sure. Nice. No, I didn't. Like I said, I, st I still don't mind being in the gym. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. do it anymore, but I, I did enjoy that. It was fun being in, in that environment. It just, it's, uh, if I could do it, if I could do it when my son was sleeping or something, it would be different. But right. it, was like, it was like all the, the key times when I wanted to be with family. It just, it just didn't make sense anymore. Yeah, I mean, that's, that we hear that so often, you know, there's this misconception that like, oh, I, I, I hate training, I want to get out of it. And I don't want to, um, you know, some people are in kind of a situation in their life where they're, where they're not so happy about what's going on. And so they look to online training. But the reality of it is the most people that we work with are actually not upset about what they're doing. They actually like training, they like being in the gym. And I think your story is a testament to that. They just realize that they it can't be the only thing that they do, they kind of need some, they, they, they need to grow you know, they need to improve kind of what they're doing. So, so you look to online training, um, which is cool. I mean, all of us are into that, right? We're, we're, we're in the online trainers Academy uh, student and alumni group right now talking about this. And I want to talk to you about uh, something that you told me beforehand. And I think is most important with you as still as a firefighter, you know, you're doing this in between shifts, like time management, prioritization, you got to be pretty good at that. Like what, what can you share about, about that? For sure. Um, and, and no, I, I actually sucked at that at first. So that's been, that's, that's <laughs> so been like the thing I've had to change. Paint, paint me a picture of how you sucked at that. Just because I, I hope that somebody listening here might be able to identify and see themselves in your shoes and, and you can kind of help them out of that with a couple of the tips you're going to give. I think the, the biggest mistake that I, was making frequently was um log online to get some work done you know you've got a you've got an hour or two hours when when my son's napping and that's when i really need to focus on work so i log online the first thing i do check all of my dms and right. and all of my messages from current clients and i and i respond to all of them and then get down to work but then as you're working ding so many messages yeah ding and and i had yep. that i had that urge that i was like I have to respond to this right now. And, and I felt the like part about clearing your inbox is it means that people start responding to your messages. Yeah. I yeah, hate that. It's like, yes, empty inbox. Then people start responding. I'm like, can't you guys just take a week to get back to me? <laughs> yeah. uh, I was, so I was doing this almost every day. I'd sit down to work for two hours of like uh, focused work time. I like to call it. And, and it would turn into two hours of messaging people. Okay. Okay. And what, what was happening? I mean, at the beginning, was that okay? How were you feeling over time with that? It was uh, it was okay because I had a pretty small. Um, this is early on. I had a pretty small group of clients. Um, I think I was like probably like eight clients at the time, um, mm -hmm. and so it was still manageable as getting things done. But then that meant like okay, I just burned through that two hour nap messaging them so now i'm going to be staying up till like midnight tonight doing their programming and everything which i had t intended on doing uh right. earlier and there's no you know what what am i hearing that's missing here what am i not hearing about this what am i hearing that's missing that doesn't make sense what am i what am i not hearing here is you weren't working on the business at all yeah exactly you weren't you weren't proactively growing your business you weren't i mean how how would you ever expect like if things were a certain way and you want them to get better or improve there was no time left you know you were basically keeping up and staying up till midnight keeping up with eight clients yeah yeah exactly that's uh, not yeah it, de it definitely gave me that feeling like okay i guess with the time i have available this is this is what i'm going to be able to do yeah, and that's that's exactly it. I mean, that I the the craziest thing too. I mean, like I said, we we have you know sons about the same age. When's your son born? What month? August twenty six. Oh, so Calvin's a couple months older. So Calvin's May, but like Calvin never slept well. And we even if he had a good night of sleep, we're like, oh, we're in the clear. And then two days later, it's like crappy again. And so I never knew if I stayed up at late one night because I was working, I never knew whether he was going to sleep well that night. And he often didn't. For sure. Which meant that it wasn't like, oh, if I, you know, when I was younger, it's like, oh, I'm going to stay up till midnight, I'm going to stay up till one or whatever it is. And then I know I'll be able to sleep in a little bit or I know I'll be able to catch up later. There was no catching up. I mean, it just, I just, my battery just kept getting like decreased and decreased and decreased. Did you find that at all? Or, or 
Is, yeah. your, is your little guy a good sleeper? And he, I hate he's you actually it. always been a really good sleeper, so yeah. he, you're going to hate me for that one. Um, <laughs> but, but it was like, it, it was like, uh, I mean, he's still, he was still a toddler. Like, they weren't perfect nights. And then mm. I'm, I was trying to get everything done before a shift so that I didn't mm. have, like, I because I, then it would be a, a day that I'd have to go without doing any work. So right. um, I'm trying to do like two days work before a shift so that I didn't have to worry about anything the next day. So, and then I was catching up. So talk to me about your break then, because I know you've been working with, with Jason, who's our head coach uh, with, with Online Trainer Academy Level 2, a lot on prioritization and time management. Can you give me like a couple of the breakthroughs? Like what has he kind of given you that's, that's really flipped this around for you? Yeah, we uh, – we, We've set a lot of goals, um, that like actionable goals that we take month to month. So one of the big things is like focused work time. It's just like making a schedule, which I know, like I learned it OTA one. Uh, I've learned it over and over again, but it's actually sticking to a schedule. So it's mm -hmm. like uh, right, you don't have to respond to your clients instantly. It's not necessary. Um, so it's having it's having blocked off time periods each day where I sit down, and that time period is either for work or that time period is just for responding to clients and, and right. rather rather than flipping back and forth between the two. And that's been huge. So usually uh, usually that's once or twice a day I'll sit down and it'll just be DMs now. And then Perfect. if I sit down later in the day to work, I'm not answering any DMs. I'm not even opening that because it's, it's just going to completely send me in a different direction. So mm -hmm. that, that's that's out of the picture. One, um, one thing that I always that I always say to people is um, email is not a task. Email is where tasks go to accumulate. And so you don't you don't have a, a block in your schedule to deal with email. You might have a block in your schedule to sort your email. Hmm. And then you have folders within your email, for example, of like client inquiries, for example. Or depending, you know, if, if DMs or whatever it is, but whatever the, the the bulk of the emails, and it could just be those just like random annoying financial things that I have to deal with in my business or whatever it is. But the idea there is, um, when you sit down, you should know what you want to accomplish when you sit down, and the better you can plan for that, the more efficient you are, the easier it's going to be to sit down and get into that and crush it out. Like you said with DMs, like I'm going to sit down. This is my DM time. If you're going to sit down and respond to client inquiries, client inquiries should all be in a folder waiting for you. You shouldn't sift through your email then and try to figure out which ones are client inquiries at that point, because immediately now you're just crushing it. You can respond to 10 clients in the same amount of time that you would otherwise respond to two if the 10 clients are basically laid out for you in a nice in a nice even way. So I, I think just that that shift that you've made of this is a time for a task and a task is not email, a task is not responding to messages. It's it's sales, it's responding to DMs, it's whatever. Yeah, and another thing that I would do often that I'd fall into that same trap is okay, now it's focused work time. I'm not doing DMs now, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't I wouldn't set out specifically what I was going to do. So I'd sit down and I'd be like, okay, I've got 90 minutes to to really do focused work right now. What do I right. want to do the most rather than what needs to get done? So so now <laughs> <laughs> which is never what you need to get done. <laughs> yeah. Like this is why bros don't work out their legs. Like what do you <laughs> what do you need to do the most? It's like yeah. calves, dude. Cabs, you need to do cabs the most. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's been a huge shift too. Just being uh, okay. This this hour here, I'm just doing social media posts, or this mm -hmm. hour here, I'm just doing client programs um, because it it all the stuff you don't want to do it all always gets pushed to the back of the list. Yeah, and doesn't that reduce overwhelm too? Totally. Yeah. I mean this this. It seems like as an online trainer, there's so many things that we need to do. And often when we start, there is. But the reality of it is the most important thing that you have to do as an online trainer is up-level your skill set, right? The difference between somebody with the exact same tactics and the exact same content that did the founding client challenge that got, even if they got nine clients and made 
let's say at at 197, let's say they're, they're charging 197, I'll just round off and made 1800 bucks versus you who made 11,000. The only difference there is an up-leveled skill set of sales and conversions, right? You understand your people better, you can speak to them more deeply, and you're better at the sales and conversions element. And the reason for that is you've had the time to work on it. You've given yourself the space to work on it. And then you've gone out and got the resources to work on that. But, but you can't really get that any other way. Right. And so this idea of like being overwhelmed because there's so much stuff that you have to do though, actually, if you actually write it down and map out how much time all of these activities should take, it's actually not that much total time. Yeah, I agree. It's a lot of time if if we're spending a lot of time when we sit down in those pockets of work that we have, which, you know, when you become a parent, you realize that the pockets get shorter and shorter and shorter. But it's a lot of time in those pockets of work that we have um, if we need to figure out when we sit down what work do I want to do today? What do I feel energized doing? What do I need in order to be effective for that work? Okay, where do I find that? And then by the time you get it in front of you and you're ready to go to work, now you're 20 or 30 minutes in deep. And now your brain is basically squashed because you're just, you just have no energy left. Like, that's what I find. The better I can, the better I can lay up my work for myself before a pocket of concentrated time to do it, the better I'll do. I'll, I'll never sit down in front of a computer for a concentrated work time and not have everything I need to work in front of me from before. Like before I leave the office, I set out my stuff for the next morning. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, that's awesome. I did. The, I actually fell into that same trap right before this this meeting because I I, I plan on showing up for this meeting at three thirty. And right. I, ended, I ended up sitting down at three because I wanted to be prepared. And then I'm like, oh, what can I work on now for the next 20, 30 minutes? And and it ended up not getting anywhere because I didn't schedule anything. Because <laughs> you don't schedule anything. you know. Yeah. And, and what's funny is that you're cognizant of that, right? You're, oh, yeah. you're so good now at the time management and the scheduling that when you don't do it, it just feels so weird. It yeah. feels so odd. Yeah. Isn't that amazing how much that shifted from that, before? That's been one of the biggest shifts for me for sure. Like, like guys, anybody listening, I mean, Alex is a full-time firefighter, <laughs> you know, when he's doing this well. Um, so it's not time. I always say uh, the CEO of a Fortune 100 company with 10,000 employees has the same amount of hours in the day that you do. The difference is that in addition, I mean, obviously more resources, but the difference in how they got there and how they do what they do and how I do what I do and how Alex does what he does is, is honestly preparation. It's, it's preparation. And then over time, if you prepare well, you can move into delegating well. And, and that's obviously the next step of, of becoming more free in this business is delegation. But it's very hard to delegate things if you don't know what those things are before, you know, more than 30 seconds before you do them. And uh, cool, man. So, so talk to me more about some of the work that you're doing with Jason. Anything else that has really made an impact with you? Yeah. Uh, we, well, one big thing we did was like having a weekly goal. Um, so if you break the month down into four, I know there's a little bit more than four weeks in a month. But if you break 30. it down. 30.42 days. There, there. That's what I was. That's what I was gonna say. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, week one is just um, putting out a call to action. Like that's that's the main focus for say social media posts that week is is just getting people to raise their hand, starting DM conversations. Um, and and obviously I do that a little bit every week, but it's that's the main focus for the mm -hmm. first week of my uh, each month. Cool. Week two. Uh, my only focus is getting people. I, I have like a free community of uh, members. Is my own, my main focus is getting people to join my free community. So that's okay. that's where I go with uh, most of my social media posts. There, um, week three is the week where I share a lot of my clients' results and progress, and and just share that with uh, with my communities on social media. 
And then uh, the final week is like where I'll, I'll really try to give out some good free resources and uh, free actionable steps for people. And then once again, just get people into a DM conversation from there. So just like just like having a specific goal each week has been huge for me rather than um, if I sit down for my social media focus time. It's what like, do oh, I do? What should I write about? What should I what? post about? What should, what should I ask people to do? Um, so just, just a little switch in the way that I was doing that previously. And it, it's really made things a lot easier. There's so much to unpack there. I love so much what you just said. What it, what I'm hearing, the one word I wrote it down on my piece of paper that I kept hearing over and over in my head as you were talking is structure. Mm. So there's so much to unpack. I mean, I recommend anybody who's listening to this, like go back and listen to what Alex just said. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of power in that that idea of week one what you're doing week two what you're doing week three what you're doing and maybe that exact structure is right for you but really what what the most important thing is is it's structure it he has a plan for what he's doing before he does it mm. you know what your call to action is going to be each week and you're basically cycling you know you're you're continually generating leads, converting leads, generating leads, building relationships, building relationships, generating leads. Like that process is going, you're basically hitting all of the, like it's almost a rhythm, right? It's like da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. There's this cadence to it that's really, really neat to hear you talk about because I, I, I hear so much amongst a community of just, I'm doing so much and I'm not getting results. What, what are you guys doing? And my response is is often, it's not that you need to do more, it's that you need to be a lot more organized and proactive and strategic around what you do. And, and I think what you just said is such a great example of that. It's so powerful just to, to walk into content production and say, here's my end goal. Would you ever walk, like we're trainers, our job is to help our clients achieve their end goal. Now, no, fitness is a journey, not a destination, right? But we still set goal posts. So we still say we're going to get you here and then you're going to keep going and keep going and keep going, keep going. But if you have no idea where you're going, you're going to get somewhere and it's not going to be where you want to go. But if you know where you're going and you set that goal post exactly like you did, you can work backwards. If you know what, what your call to action is, if you know that people want to join your Facebook group, well, what kind of stories are you going to tell? Who's the yeah. Facebook group for? How does the Facebook group benefit them, right? What's some great stuff that happened in the Facebook group that previous week or whatever it is? It's not very hard to think about three or four pieces of content that surround that with a very clear and distinct call to action. But you've got to start with that with that end goal. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, even, even to lead off of that a little bit, um, one thing that I've found has helped me is just really focusing on the things that are getting me results. So, so like, for instance, um, Instagram, I don't get a ton of action on Instagram. So I don't put a ton of time into Instagram right now. And that might shift. And I'm open to the idea of that shifting down the road. But right now, I'm not getting a ton of action on Instagram. So I, I just don't, I don't spend a lot of time on it. So where are you getting? Where are you getting people from? Facebook. Post Facebook. profile or public? A, a, a professional pitch a little bit of both uh it, like so so the goal is always to get people into my my free community on facebook right. and then that free community is where i get almost all of my action and so uh, you know the the this misconception that you need big numbers i i i mean Sorry to 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 break your bubble, but you're not like a you're not like some big celebrity with yeah. hundreds of thousands or millions no. of followers. Like, how many people are you connected to on your pages, and how many people in your group? Uh, I, my Instagram's probably got like six hundred followers. Um, Facebook, I've got like a thousand friends probably, and uh, my free fa Facebook community is like three hundred people. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And you're just, you're so strategic. Again, the structure, right? You're going deep with them and you're creating value for them. Those, I mean, anybody can achieve those numbers. Yeah. Oh um, yeah, for sure. 
And, and I mean, the proof is in the pudding, right? Look at this. Like you did a founding client challenge. You did 11,000 from it. May, you did 6,600. June, you did 5,120 as a side gig. <laughs> like, like imagine if you were doing this full time, by the way, we, we got to talk about that. You and I, um, <laughs> but, uh, but talk really quick. And then I, and then I, you know, we, we got to wrap this up pretty soon, but talk really fast. What, what you're doing to convert them? Cause I think a lot of people listening are probably interested in that. So they're in your free Facebook group. Can you walk me through like step, like quick, like just rifle it off step one, step two, step three, how that conversion works. Yeah. Uh, a couple times a week three times a week, I, I post like a, a really general question, like um, post a GIF after your workout today or uh, share, what did you have for breakfast today? Like that's how general these questions are. Mm -hmm. Anybody engage anything to just get people talking. Exactly. As yeah. soon as somebody, or not as soon, but I, I then go back, anybody who's commented on it or liked it uh, that I haven't talked to recently is getting a DM from me. Hey, thanks for comment, com commenting on my post. How's it going? And then we just well, talk. And then, and then if, if that's going anywhere, it does. And if it doesn't, well, it just, I just show interest in their life. Talk mm -hmm. to them. It was good talking to you. Good catching up. Talk to you later. Yeah. And I think, I think that's useful for a lot of people to hear this idea that um, you're not blind messaging people, right? These are people who are, who you've attracted to join your community, right? With some yeah. sort of content. And then, and then you're basically just following up with them and you've got, I mean, I know you've worked really, really hard, which I want to talk on, talk about with your, basically your skills. I mean, this idea of compassionate coaching to sell, uh, which is what you're doing in the DMs and which is what you're doing on the phone. So um, let's talk about that because um, let's talk about let's talk about basically how you how you gathered that i mean you were in you were in a, one of our previous cohorts of online trainer academy level two now you're in uh the legacy version of that um talk to me about kind of how that smoothed out that process for you okay it's, this is funny actually is uh before ota2 my whole process was dm only i refused to get on the phone wasn't happening okay. Okay. If somebody if somebody messaged me and they're like, I need to talk to you on the phone, I would do it. But other than that, it was like, no, DM only. Uh, and word of mouth, if you if you like me, like here's here's my program, here's my price. Do you want in? No. Okay. Have a good day. Um, right. And that was I was. How well was that working for you? It was okay. <laughs> I mean, I, it, nothing was going crazy for sure, and mm -hmm. uh, it was comfortable. Was the thing right? I, I was right. comfortable there, and I didn't have to get outside of my comfort zone in a DM message. Um, right. So I'd have to say the biggest thing for me from OTA two, maybe not the biggest thing, but certainly one of the biggest was just stepping outside your comfort zone uh, and getting comfortable at speaking to people on the phone and doing the process one-on-one uh, -on -one with somebody on a phone rather than through a computer because it's 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 so much different. I mean, you you have to if you want to charge higher rates. Yeah. You have to. There's, there's no other way to do it. You have to make that much more of a personal connection and have a really good – like, like first, identify and basically select the people who are getting on the phone and vet them first so you're not just getting on the phone with everybody. Um, you, you told me that, you know – Level two of the online training academy, uh, I wrote down pushed you harder and fast, but like pushed you harder and faster than you ever would have done anything yourself. Can you talk talk to that for a sec. Yeah, uh, going into OTA two, I was like, okay, I'm doing I'm doing pretty well now. This is this is good. I can't see this growing much more than this or much faster than this. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I you posted about that OTA two or I talked to you I think through a DM and I was like yeah okay I'm in I, I mean I bought every book so I was like I've never I've never bought something from PTDC that I didn't feel taught me something so I was like let's let's hear what is it and right. uh, and <laughs> and then from like day one in that course it was just like oh it's gonna be like this and it just forced me to really grind like I was there were some mornings I was waking up an hour or two early because I knew I had to get that done but also take care of what I was already taking care of with the business mm -hmm. so it, it it made me step outside my comfort zone but it, it just pushed me to take action on the business that uh, probably would have taken me 
I, I would I would say years longer than I than I did in that two, two month period. It's the amount of times we've heard that from people in that they're like, yeah, no, I might have gotten here, I might not have, but like, I've accomplished more in eight weeks than I would have accomplished in two years. Hundred um, percent. So we got to go, but I guess my last question is: if somebody was considering joining level two of the online trainer academy, what would you say to them? Do it. Um, as long as as long as you you already have your feet in the game a little bit if you have a little bit of background in online training and you're you're ready to take it to the next level i i, I can't see anybody regretting the decision cool man well awesome alex thank you so so much for chatting and um guys if you're looking to scale up your online training business just like alex go to the ptdc.com ota2 uh you can fill out the application schedule your first of two interviews to be accepted in the program we vet people really really strongly for it we won't accept you if if we don't feel like we can really help you uh, and we want to make sure that you know what's right for you as well. So the ptc.com slash OTA2 to apply. And uh, Alex, thank you so, so much, man. This was great. Um, I think people got a lot of value from it. Really appreciate you. Thanks cool. so much. Thanks, John. See ya.